shoot blight is the most conspicuous symptom of fire blight infection. Blighted shoots show the typical shepherd's crook appearance as they start to flag. A sign of the pathogen during this early infection is an orange color that can normally be seen uh, very early on in shoot blight infections. Also what becomes apparent is the symptom of necrosis along the leaf, along the main veins and leaves as the bacteria moves along the vascular tissue and kills cells there. Another common sign of the pathogen that's usually seen very early in shoot blight infection is the occurrence of bacterial ooze. Ooze drops are basically bacterial pathogen cells that are encased in a sugary matrix, a polysaccharide matrix. This, this goo, this bacterial ooze, really protects the cells as, as they exude out from the host and they'll spread from this ooze, these ooze droplets, they'll spread uh, by activity of, of wind and rain and perhaps insect activity and they're very protected in that ooze. The ooze will be uh, liquidy at first, usually in the mornings as it first appears. It will dry up, the cells will survive and they actually survive quite well in that dried up bacterial ooze. As shoe plate infections progress, then the leaves become brown as they die and the shoots take on a burned appearance and that gives the fire blight disease its name. It looks like the, the shoots have been burned right on the tree and that uh, gives us a name for fire blight. Actively growing shoots are the most susceptible to fire blight infection. The bacterium needs natural openings at the shoot tip to infect and those openings will usually be caused by wounds that could be caused by blowing sand or insects whatever, they're microscopic. We can't see them, but they're wounds at the shoot tip that the bacterium will invade and then cause an infection that leads to the shoot blight and the shepherd's crook symptom associated with it. This infection first starts at a microscopic cellular level. Individual cells of the bacterial pathogen interacting with individual cells of the plant. Following that initial infection, the bacterium moves into the xylem tissue and then rapidly moves through the petioles and leaves and then into shoots and that eventually winds up with the shoot blight infection that we see. As few as 20 cells are all that's required to cause a shoot infection and so there's lots of inoculum in orchards because bacterium are usually moving through orchards in numbers as high as a million or more. In fact if we've got conducive conditions for blossom blight infection we could have as many as a million cells of the fire blight pathogen on one flower. That's enough inoculum from one flower to initiate 50,000 shoot blight infections. So that's a ton of inoculum and it shows just how difficult it is to ultimately control shoot blight because very few cells can cause even one shoot blight infection. Once the bacterial cells have migrated to the xylem or the water conducting tubes of the leaf, they form a biofilm and this again is a, a sugary matrix that protects the bacteria. It also allows them to absorb nutrients from the plant. This matrix also plugs the xylem tubes and that leads to the wilt that we see and that's associated with the shepherd's crook symptom. The bacteria though, they'll move through the xylem from a leaf into the petiole and into the shoot and this biofilm matrix will help the bacteria then migrate systemically through the tree. Shoot blight can be particularly devastating on young trees planted on fire blight susceptible rootstocks. This is because the fire blight pathogen can go systemic very quickly and easily and essentially run the tree going down and causing rootstock blight that will kill the tree. Trees that are less than about eight years old are particularly susceptible to rootstock blight. What are the sources of the bacterial cells infecting shoots? There are two main sources. The first is inoculum from infected flowers. Flower colonization and infection, as I've spoken about in an earlier video, represents a major opportunity for the fire blight pathogen to build up tremendously large populations. Blossom blight infections result in internalization of the pathogen and systemic spread. Here's an infected blossom cluster on a gala apple tree the pathogen has moved from that cluster into this shoot. And you can see uh, evidence of that infection through the blackening of the shoot right there. 
This internal spread itself can result in blight of a shoot that the infected flower cluster is on. This entire shoot uh, has now been blighted due to that fire blight infection. Also, cells can emerge from blossom blight clusters as ooze. This timing coincides well with active shoot growth and that greatly facilitates spread. The second source of inoculum is cankers. Fire blight cankers are overwintering sites of the pathogen in trees. The bacteria will emerge from cankers in the spring as ooze. This initial inoculum usually is transported to flowers by wind, rain, and insects. However, in some years, temperatures during bloom are cold, in the 50s say, and do not favor pathogen growth or blossom blight infection. In those years, the pathogen will eventually spread from cankers to shoot tips, causing the first shoot infections. The first signs of shoot infection from a canker source in an orchard are usually the occurrence of shoot blight in a single tree or in a couple of adjacent trees. Within a single tree, if the canker is located up high in the tree, shoot blight symptoms may be concentrated on one side of the tree in a cone type pattern. This is evidence of rain splash dispersal of cells from a canker. Wind can also contribute to move cells into shoots from adjacent trees. What's important to remember is that once the first wave of shoots are infected, secondary spread from these shoots will continue during the summer. Also, the secondary cycles can occur fairly rapidly. On highly susceptible cultivars such as Gala and Jonathan, it's quite common to see ooze exuding from shoots prior to even seeing visible symptoms of wilt. That is just a sign of how quickly the pathogen moves systemically through the infected shoot. As long as the trees continue to grow in the summer, they're going to be susceptible to shoot blight infection until the terminal bud is set. The best ways to limit shoot blight infection are first of all to grow the least susceptible varieties you can. Uh, another strategy would be to surround your most highly susceptible, highly prized varieties with less susceptible varieties to kind of keep the inoculum load down in that block. And then the other strategies are to decrease inoculum as best you can. Make sure that cankers over winter are pruned out. Make sure that you control blossom blight as best you can. And use apogee if you can, except for on empire, wine sap, and stamen cultivars. Use apogee uh, to keep the shoot growth inhibited. These will be your best methods to control shoot blight infection.